The Bible isn't just a book of random stories. It's 66 different books that come together to tell one story. An incredible one about God's love for us. And now for an amazing story inspired by the book of Genesis, chapter 41. Joseph stood at the barred window of his prison cell, staring out into the busy streets of Egypt's greatest city. Now, even though he had done nothing wrong, he had been sold into slavery by his own brothers, and then, after years of excellent work, had been lied about and thrown into prison. Two years before, Pharaoh's drink taster had promised to get Joseph out of jail after Joseph told him the meaning of a dream, but the man had forgotten. Oh, what if I'm stuck in here for the rest of my life? Taking a deep breath, Joseph left the window and went about his daily tasks. The jailer had put him in charge of all the other prisoners, but still, Joseph couldn't leave. Joe! Hey, Joe! Don't worry, I made sure to get rid of the flower with bugs in it. Oh, forget about that. You need a shower. What? Plus a shave and haircut. Why? Because you can't go before Pharaoh with your head looking like a bird's nest. Wait, uh, Pharaoh? Oh, he's asking for you. Me? Pharaoh had some cray-cray dreams, and that drink taster who got sprung up out of here a couple years ago finally remembered about you. So Pharaoh wants me? Oh, stop yammering. Here, take my razor. In no time at all, Joseph had cleaned up and was ushered into Pharaoh's huge throne room. Oh, this wide open space. Oh, but if God doesn't tell me the meaning of Pharaoh's dream, I'll be back in jail, or worse. Pharaoh and all his officials studied the young man standing before them. I had two dreams last night, but not one of my wise men can tell me what they mean. I've heard you can explain dreams. I can't do it. Send him back, but God will give you an answer. Pharaoh settled back down on his throne, still skeptical. All right, we'll see what your God can do. Tell me your dreams, please. I was standing on the bank of the Nile, and seven fat cows came up out of the river. They started eating the grass, but then seven skinny cows came out of the water. They ate up the fat cows, but they were still skinny. Though Joseph was listening to Pharaoh, he was also listening to God. Okay, cows who want to eat more beef. Huh. What about the second dream? I saw seven full heads of grain, but then seven thin, dried out heads of grain came up and swallowed the full heads of grain. Then I woke up. Joseph took a deep breath. God had given him the meaning of the dreams. Now he must tell Pharaoh, no matter what Pharaoh might do to him. Your dreams both mean the same thing. God is showing you there will be seven years with plenty of food in Egypt. Most excellent! <laughs> but after that, seven more years will come when there won't be enough food and terrible hunger will destroy the land. Most unexcellent! Pharaoh glowered at Joseph, as if he could change the dream's meaning with a glare. But now you know, you can do something about it. Choose a wise man and put him in charge of gathering food while there's lots of it. He can store it up. Then during the time there's no food, the people won't go hungry. Hmm, a most excellent plan. Pharaoh turned to his officials. The spirit of God is in this man. He's best for the job, right? Pharaoh waved his arm and beckoned Joseph closer. I'm putting you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Me? Here, take my ring with the official stamp. 
And someone find this man linen robes and a gold chain and, and get him set up with one of those new 1829 BC chariots. Gold rims, the works. Within a single day, Joseph had risen from prisoner to the second most important person in Egypt. At Pharaoh's request, Joseph traveled all over the land gathering extra food. How much grain do you have? 500 bushels. It's a bumper crop. Ah, oh, that's wonderful. We'll take 100 bushels and store it up. The land grew amazing, beautiful crops for seven years. But the following year, hardly anything grew. Just as God had said, the people cried out to Pharaoh. My fields only grew seven measly bushels of wheat. We'll starve. That would be most unexcellent. So go to Joseph, do what he tells you. The people of Egypt all turned to Joseph and he provided them with food from the grain he had stored up for the past seven years. Oh, thank you, oh, thank you. In fact, people from other countries who were hungry had heard about the grain in Egypt and came to buy from Joseph. Because Joseph had trusted God to be with him during a difficult time, now he and many others were able to survive the seven lean years. 